So Dusty Hendrickson just saw all that go down. Says, okay. Dusty needs a big one right now. Struggled right out of the gate. And that's where he struggled with, struggled in run one there, that very first rail. Ooh. The cap two pull, giving him a little bit of trouble there. And that front two pull, oh, just sleeping on him. Let's get a pulse check. Cap 12 double switch tail. He went down on the triple here, but makes no mistake. So cap 12 back 1440 needs something real substantial. Okay, Dusty Henriksen throws his hat in the ring with that front side triple. I didn't think he had enough whip to get it around, but that's why uh, he's Dusty. Wow. Let's take a look here. This is where he went down in run one, the backside triple 14-4. He grabs Weedle there, that front hand on the toe edge, puts it down, and that sets him up for the front side 14-40 triple. Three off kilter dips, four full times round. You said he needed something of the jumbo variety. Yeah, and, and that's what he gets here. Now let's break this down for you folks at home. Dusty has a cap 12, a back 14, and a front 14. You compare that to Rene and Mark. Fourth place. So here's Mons Roisland. Gotta put it together, Craig. Right here, right now. Switch hard way back to two out. Comes off maybe a foot early. Cleans it up on rail two. He struggled with the second jump all day long. A little bit of sketch landing on that, but there it is. He switched up his grab there. That is what we're used to seeing him do on that switch backside rotation. And a front side 1440, so a couple bobbles, but a full pull nonetheless. That's a morale booster, though, isn't it? You can see in his body language, he knows, hey, there was things that I could have done better on this run, but still stoked when you land a run. I mean, a switch back 16. That's, that's a big trick. Discovery trade. matters, yeah. <laughs> even in a contest. <laughs> switch back 16 into this front side 1440. So Mon saving his best for last. Really good to see. And that's typical of Mon's role. It's hard to believe, though, Craig. In all of his X Games appearance, and this being his 17th, he's got seven medals. He's got two silvers and two bronzes. He's never won on the Jeep Slope style course. He's coming off a lot of momentum in Lax last weekend. Right. Got a silver medal in that Slope style event. So he's riding strong. Coming to this first of three jumps, left foot forward, unnatural way of riding, switch takeoff. Fakey to forward, cap 12. Front side 1440 flat, count it. Setting up backside, probably one of his quickest rotations. Back 16, 20, four and a half full times round. Stale Sandbeck with our first full pull of the slope style final, Brando. Stale's having a couple of months too. Uh, his video came out last month, Rumble. Rumble. Him and Torger Bergram. Gimbal God. Film in that one. There's that back 16. Keeps the hands off the snow. Doesn't want frostbite. If you have some time, research Max's story because uh, so much resilience, so much tenacity to beat something so big and then come back and be so successful. So Max currently sitting in fifth place. Cap two lip, two out on that first rail. There's that back four, 50, 270 out, a little bit early. Here's that backside 1260. This sets him up for his two 16s on the final jumps. Here's the cab one, takes off switch, lands regular, and then another hand drag. So struggling with that cab 16, as I think anybody would, but not with the front. 16, four and a half full times round. Boy, you crazy. 
So I like it. I don't know if that's in the conversation of Rene McMorris. Now, if you're looking at the scoreboard, you're saying, I'm not seeing any numbers. It's the judges place it. So the judges watch that entire run and do they say and they say to themselves, is that better than Mark's run? Is that better than Renee's run? Right. If it's not, he stays where they think he should. That is where I think the judges would separate Max and Mark. Probably there. the determining factor. So here's Darcy Sharp sitting in eighth place. Fourth and final run. The clock has ended. Don't worry. Each of these riders is going to get a fourth and final run. Board slide, switch up, switch front board, 270 out. That sets them up, switch for that switch front board, front blunt, if you will. That's another conversation, 270 out. Switch back 12. That was a very gangster landing. Front side triple, 1440, yep. Darcy Sharp, do it for the reply, guys. Triple 1440, yep. Darcy Sharp. You could hear that scream probably all the way in Comox, BC, because uh, he is fired up. The double arm claim. It was a long time coming for Darcy out here today, but he saves his best for last. Overcame so much adversity, knee reconstruction, had COVID earlier this year. So happy to be out here, and I'm so stoked to see him put down this fourth and final run. Backside triple 1440 to cap things off. Where does this put him? I don't, it'll be interesting to see where the judges put him. His run was looking in. What can he do to get back in a podium position, Craig? More of the same. He's got the 1620s. He's got the technical rail game. But when it's in the final, perfection is demanded. Switch back two, keeps going. In runs one and two, he tried to pull that back. Here he does not, setting him up for the switch. Double back rodeo, grabbing tail. Switch tail, pardon me. So cool, such a hard rotation. Into the front side 1440 grabs Melon, keeps it flat. Needs back 18. Back 19? Wait, what? Was that? I, I need to get a better look at there. We kind of switched camera angles, so I don't know if he did. Yeah, let north of a back 18. We'll have to take another look at that. I don't want to call that wrong because if I think he did what I think he did. Yeah, Rene was just a uh, shrug emoji. Get in the Jeep. We're going snowboarding. <laughs> that was a really good Mean Girls reference, and I don't know if I saw it coming. Here's the switch double backside rodeo, switch tail grab. Okay, walk me through this, Craig. Let's take a look at this. Third and final jump. Takes off left foot forward, 360, 720, 1080, 1440, 1800. 19. The math checks 80. out. The math checks out. That is the first time we have ever seen that at the X Games. That is a lot of rotation. I'm going to tell you that from him. He kind of knuckled a little bit on the last jump, came off the rails a tiny little bit early. So there was definitely some things he could clean up. We'll see if he does that here. Switch back two. That was perfect. You can't do it better than that. Switch back two, pull back. Front side 1440. So front side 14 to start seeing things off. Backside 1620. Okay. Switch back 16. Yes! Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Now that was well executed. Now. Okay. Get the Obviously, <laughs> obviously Red is climbing. Yes, he has to. How high does he climb? Where does he go? There's that back 16, triple dip. Here's a look at the switch back 16. Let's also wrap our head around how wild it is that we're calling 16 triples into a, not into a liver when it mattered most. He's in disbelief. Of course, Mark McMorris and Rene Renekong still have their final runs to go as well. But here's Sven Torgren. If you, are just joining us or haven't seen uh, 
the previous run, Sven Torgan took a very hard hit in his first run on the second jump, skipped his second run, came back in his third, and put on a show. Run four, I think it'll be more of the same. Here's where he went down really hard, that frontside triple 1440, so difficult, so blind. So Sven Thorgren with the front triple 14 into the backside 16 stale grab. So Sven obviously inspired by what Marcus was just able to put down. He puts down a very clean final run. The money booter. One of the only... <laughs> He's driving the line. One of the only snowboarders to do that backside rotation with a stale fish grab. Kind of his signature, if yeah. you will. Marcus Cleveland sitting in eighth place, still looking for that signature Marcus run. He's won this event twice before, but it's gonna need something huge right here, right now. I love that 50-50 over 270, pulls it back, sets himself up switch for this third and final rail. Cab two in, two out. Off the toes. Oh, that was really flippy. Okay, so back 16. Yeah. Sets him up for this cab 18. Went way too big last time. Note the speed check right there. Smart. Get going. Okay. Marcus Cleveland stomping the yard on his final <laughs> run. That was wild. So our. Cab 18 predictions from Marcus Cleveland have come to fruition. There's a good look at that 50-50 front over two. Pulls it back here. Backside 16-20. Doesn't really dip it a lot. Keeps it flat. Put some switch stance for the landing and sets him up for this. The cab 18. Look at the patience on that. If you have ever spun cab off a jump, you know it's very difficult to stay patient. The to grab. not go a little bit early, but Marcus Cleveland holds the grab almost the entirety wow. of this 1800. Perseverance. Not enough pop, then too much pop. Correct. Then just that right amount. Really is getting nervous. The guy he just bumped out of the top spot. The most decorated athlete in this field. And oh, by the way, partner, he's guaranteed at least a medal in this. So he reclaims the all time Winter X medal lead. But he sure would like to end up with the gold, wouldn't he? One thing in the windshield right now, and that's to get to the bottom cleanly. Switch back 270, puts it right between the feet. Solid up top. Switch back triple. Yep, so well done. Frontside triple, does he go back 16 triple or does he go back quad? Back 16, perfect. You can't do it any better. Can't do it any better. He's already pulled over. He can't pull over any further. <laughs> that was so well done from Mark McMorris. That was so smooth, Craig. Take another look. Here's jump two, front side triple, 1440. Here's that third and final jump. See how he grabs Indy? That's the backhand, a little bit more difficult than that front hand grab, the Weedle grab, if you will. Eyes on the landing, takes it to blind. Yeah, watch where his head at it. I love these slow-mos. Staring at the landing the entirety of that last flip, right until he has to take it to 16, 20.